What's going on everybody, King of Dragons 5000 here, coming at you with another figure review. Today we'll be having a look at the McFarlane Toys DC Multiverse Batman of Earth Negative 11, The Drowned. And so here we have the Drowned pose and out of the packaging. Before we have a look at the figure, let's actually take a look at what the Drowned comes with. She does come with one accessory. She comes with this Trident of Atlantis, which is a really nice accessory. I love the way this thing came out. The detailing on it is really nice. And then, of course, she does get the McFarlane display base. Other than that, we don't get anything else with the Drowned. I think interchangeable hands would have been nice, especially to have her with two grip hands. But overall, I still think she's a really nice looking figure. So with that out of the way, guys, let's actually take a closer look at the Drowned. And so here we have a closer look at the Drowned, and I really like the way McFarlane made this figure. As I've said in the past reviewing all my other Dark Knights figures, I really did like the Dark Knights storyline. So having one of each of the Dark Knights is really nice. I am really glad I do have her in hand. So taking a look at the Drowned here, really do like the detailing on her. McFarlane has done an amazing job with her head. Now there is a reason for her eye patch right here. She basically removed her eye to make herself more metahuman. And you can see all the scarring right here. I really do like the Drowned. If, you don't, if you're not familiar with the Drowned, this is a dark multiverse version of Batman. I guess this would be Batwoman. And her name is Bryce Wayne and... Basically the same story as Batman, except she takes control of Atlantis, which is why she has the, the trident of Atlantis. But it's a really nice story. I really do recommend you read it. So taking a look at the Drowned, really like the way her cowl looks. It's pretty much just a bandana they did at the bat ears on there, so I really do like that. Really loving her hair sculpt. I love the way it's just swayed off to one side. Really does give her that swimming look or... Uh, her windswept hair that looks really nice and I love the green wash that they added to it is it a wash or a dry brush it looks like a dry brush it could be a green dry brush and it's really nice and subtle it's not overpowering so that's one thing I really do like there are some parts on it that are more recessed than others so it gives it more depth and more uh, detailing so I really do like that so overall really like the paint on her head Let's actually take a look at the rest of her body now. You can see she does have the bat emblem right here on her necklace, which does look really nice. I love this jacket that they gave her. Something I do appreciate is this really nice detailing going throughout her jacket. It's torn at the bottom, as you can see, but it really does look like worn leather. So, yeah, McFarlane has done an amazing job. Just with the jacket, I really do like it, and I do like the fact that we do get a soft overlay for her jacket right here and then it's sculpted for the sleeves something she does carry over from aqua woman yes it's a gender bent world is she does have these really nice gloves and they do look kind of like a combination of aquaman and batman's gloves although they really do look like aquaman gloves but they also are full of texture as you can see they're not smooth they look uh Almost, she's wearing like pretty much worn leather throughout her entire costume with the exception of a couple of pieces. Her uh, corset here, you can see it is sculpted really nicely. So we do have some texturing in the fabric right there. We have some more texturing right here and you can see the lacing looks really nice. Something I do appreciate is that her mid torso right here is a soft rubber so it doesn't really break up the sculpt. It does hinder articulation but... The sculpt on it looks really nice and I do like that. Going on to her skirt piece right here. It looks like seaweed and that's really interesting that she would be wearing um, practically seaweed as her skirt. And it's it looks like wet seaweed so McFarlane has done a really good job painting this and making it look like it's actually wet. And the gloss on it looks really nice. I do like that. And it's a really nice contrast from the matte finish on her corset to the gloss of the seaweed. Moving down to her legs, she is wearing a pair of tights, as you can see. I believe the tights are really dark jungle green. They are practically black, but you can actually see she has a black pouch right here. 
doesn't have a utility belt, but she does have a utility pouch, and that pouch is sculpted really nicely. That is something that you wouldn't expect them to have sculpted. That's actually a detailing that, that most companies would overlook, but McFarlane actually added it in, so good job there. Then we have a look at her boots, and her boots continue that really rugged sea... Uh, I don't want to say seaweed, but it does look like it's been in the ocean a while. You can see it's weathered really, really nicely. It's hard to tell, but it feels like there might be a green dry brushing throughout it, but I, it might just be my lights playing tricks on me, seeing as how this is a really dark green and the light bouncing off of it might simulate that. But yeah, it's a really nice detailing and that's something I really do like. One thing I want to point out is that McFarlane did a better job with these ball joints here at the ankles. It's not like the Red Death or Bruce or Thomas Wayne where they just cut the sculpt, put a ball joint in there. This is actually sculpted to house a ball hinge, so good job there. And then my, probably my least favorite thing about this figure, she has heels. As you guys know, I don't like figures in heels because it does make them really, really hard to stand. Although I haven't had too many issues standing up the drowned you can see my hands are right here and she's standing up pretty nicely so she does have a really good center of balance as long as you have her feet pl firmly planted on the floor and she's not leaning over to one side so i do like that so the drowned here is chock full of detailing and I, something i even forgot to even mention was that she does have a choker on that's something i almost completely overlooked but yeah really liking the skin tone on her it looks like she really hasn't seen the sun she's essentially a bottom dweller now so they did a really really fantastic job capturing her, the likeness of the drowned just like they have with all the other dark knights so with that out of the way guys let's actually get a compare to other figures you may have in your collection here we have the Drowned pose next to a Marvel Legends Cyclops and a DC Multiverse Superman. Here we have the Drowned pose next to a WWE Elite Scale figure and a Mezco 112th Collective, Popeye the Sailor Man. And finally, here we have the Drowned pose next to a Lightning Collection White Ranger and a Star Wars Black Series Mandalorian. So with the comparisons out of the way, let's actually have a closer look at the Drowned's articulation. So she does have a ball joint here at the head, which she doesn't really get too much downward movement just because of the way it's sculpted and upwards movement is practically non-existent because of her hair, so that is unfortunate. Surprisingly enough, she does have pretty good head rotation, so that is pretty good, as well as some pretty decent head tilt. So we don't get too much up and down play, but we get some really nice head pivot as well as left and right rotation, which that's actually pretty impressive seeing as how she does have this big piece of hair. So yeah, really do like that. She does have the same ball joints that we've seen in the McFarlane figures where it's a ball socket connecting into the torso. So it does pivot back, forward, up, down. And it works really nicely because the jacket is a soft plastic and it gets out of the way. So I really do like the way that works. Arms are on ball joints, go out to the side, go all the way around, no problem. Although this arm might be a little bit hindered by her hair, but you can work around it. So there is that. We do have a bicep swivel that works pretty fine. We have double bend at the elbow, giving us much better than 90 degrees. We have a standard ball hinge here at the wrist, which does go up and down. We can rotate that joint to have in and out movement, so that works perfectly fine. So right here in her waist, we don't get any type of cut. It's basically a rubber piece connecting all this, and we do have an ab crunch down here as you can see it does crunch right here now it is thicker right here in the front so we don't get too much movement and forcing that too much can break the figure so don't force it if you don't have to going back works much better because the plastic is a little bit softer in the back so yeah it is a little bit hindered which is unfortunate so she does have a hinge that lets her lean to the side, like we saw with the arrow and the robin crows. But they use a thicker material, so she kind of just pops back into place, as you can see. You can get like one click, but that's about it. Uh, let's see, two clicks? Yeah, it's basically just one click, unfortunately. And she does have a swivel here at the waist, 
So at least they did give her that. Her legs are a little bit hindered by her skirt piece. They do kick forward to about there. So that's 90 degrees. So that's pretty good. They kick back almost to 90 degrees. So that's pretty good. I have noticed that one of her legs goes out further than the other. I think it's because of the way the slit in her skirt is made. The left leg goes out further than the right leg, as you can see. And that's probably also due to the pouch right here on her right leg. So, yeah, legs have pretty decent articulation. No thighs, well, some slight thigh swivel, as you can see. It's really minuscule, so it's not really much to talk about. Double bend here at the knee works no problem. We do have a hinge that works at her ankle going back and forward. We can rotate that to give her a true rocker ankle, but because she does have heels, the peg goes almost vertically in, so it's pretty much just double rotation. So yeah, that is a little bit unfortunate. And then we do have a toe hinge, which on figures with heels, I don't understand toe hinges. That really isn't how toes work in hin in heels. So yeah, really, really surprised at how good she articulates, but it could be better if they had just made a cut right here above her corset underneath her chest. I think that would have been a really good spot to hide articulation, but that's neither here nor there. So with that out of the way, guys, that's the drowns articulation. So let's actually get her posed for my, and get her ready for my final thoughts. And then we'll wrap up this review. And so here we have the drown pose for my final thoughts and overall really love the detailing on this figure. Her articulation isn't the greatest and like I said there are some points that could have been improved on. But what we have here is a, another really great figure from McFarlane and I am just really happy to finally complete my Dark Knights from the Metal series. I think that's one of the best things that McFarlane has done. Seeing as how DC Collectibles and Mattel never gave us true figures from that particular comic book series which is of travesty seeing as how they are really great figures and Mattel didn't even attempt to tackle it and then we had DC collectibles that never made them and pretty much are out of the figure game at this point overall I think McFarlane has done a pretty decent job with the DC license and the drowned here is another great addition to the collection so the drowned here is part of the 2021 series of the DC Multiverse, which I'm really looking forward to this year. I Hopefully we get more impressive figures like the drowned here. I'm really looking forward to what McFarlane has to offer. The drowned here is probably one of my favorite figures I've picked up this year so far. The year is still young, but this is still a really impressive figure. And if you're a fan of the Dark Knights Metal series, you're going to want to have the drowned just so you have your entire Dark Knights Metal team. I can't say enough good things about this figure. Like I said, she is a little bit hindered in articulation and a little bit light on accessories, but the lightness on accessories is something we've come to expect from McFarlane. If you are looking for the Drowned, I did find her at Target, which I think Target is getting these first. She will run you about $20 and that's pretty standard for McFarlane, but I think it's a fair pricing is how she has a lot of detail, unique sculpt. The gold on the trident is really impressive. I am happy about that. So for $20, I really do recommend the drone. And with that being said, guys, I'm King of Dragons 5000. Don't forget to like this video, leave a comment, subscribe to my channel. Go check out all my other action figure reviews as well as all my other DC Multiverse videos. Hopefully you find them informative. As always, if there's a figure you would like to see me review, let me know down in the comments and if it's in my collection, I'll definitely have a look at it. While you're at it, check out my Instagram account for new and exciting action figure photos. And as always, ring that bell to be notified every time I upload a video. Until next time, guys, I'll see you later. Take care, everyone.